Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. I've uh, been absent for a bit, and uh, I'm not sure this uh, uh, there'll be a series of, uh, of videos after this one. It might be a, a significant pause before the next one, but bottom line is I haven't been doing much with Amateur Radio. Well, I haven't been doing anything, in fact, so um, that's why... Uh, I've not been uh, posting any videos because, you know, not doing anything means there's just nothing to film. Anyway, uh, someone mentioned to me the other day, now I won't say who it was because um, they've, uh, they've just changed their call sign uh, to disassociate themselves from this channel because I've mentioned them in the past. <laughs> but I'll thank them for the suggestion regardless. You know who you are. Okay, now... <clears throat> This, uh, what to the uh, casual observer may appear to be an explosion in a spaghetti bolognese factory, is a continuing HF amplifier project. <laughs> now, um, I had a problem with the, uh, the two HT transformers that I've got. One gives a HT rail that's a little bit below the sweet spot, and the one that's in there now is one that gives a HT rail slightly higher than, the, well, a fair bit higher actually than the sweet spot. Someone said, ah, have you thought about bucking and boosting? If you can't get the right transformer, you can buck or you can boost. Now, you know, that's nothing to, uh, nothing to do with stealing cars or riding horses. It's uh, how you can actually change the um, AC voltage produced on the uh, secondary side of your transformer by bucking or boosting the primary with another transformer. Now, I'll draw this on the whiteboard so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. I'd never heard of bucking and boosting. Uh, not, in the, uh, not in the context we're talking about here anyway, <laughs> until recently. But I was really, I did some experiments, I was very surprised to find that it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do initially, um, I'm just going to uh, focus on these two meters, I think, down here. Let's get that leg out of the way. Here at uh, VK6CS, of course, as you can see, when dealing with these high voltage HT supplies, safety is always a priority. <laughs> okay, let's turn the meat. Let's, let's turn the meters on, and then I'll show you what I mean. Now, what I was getting with the... Uh, I, w I wasn't able to run this power supply without the Variac because if I just flicked the switch, the HT volts went to, you know, 5,000 volts plus, sort of 5,200 volts, something like that, or higher. And, uh, you know, it's sort of making the valve... It's pushing the valve insulation a bit. Um, and uh, it's also getting very, very close to the working voltage maximum on the uh, smoothing capacitor stack which is uh, 5,400 volts. So, okay, so let's just uh, do a very quick demonstration here. Just turn these meters on. Oh. The battery might be a bit suspect in this one. Okay. Right, now the one on the right hand side, the grey one, is going to show the HT rail voltage in kilovolts. And the left hand one, I'm going to show you the mains voltage. Okay. Now you'll see initially the HT will rise reasonably slowly, and then I'll put another plug in. It's not actually wired together at the moment, but there's a, a timer relay on top of the transformer. And that shorts out a series resistor uh, to the to the primary uh, as a, as inrush protection. You know, it's a slow start if you like. So you see the HT coming up reasonably slowly. Then I'll plug that in. It will just run through its I don't know, 10 second time or whatever it is, and it will short the resistor out. And you'll see it jump up to a final value. As it's plugged into that, yes, it is. Okay. Usual amount of prep work, of course. I've got something else plugged into where this plugs into. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, here we go. No smoke and flames. There we are, 3,000. 3,670. It's creeping up a bit now. I'll just plug in the um, timer relay. Uh, start the fan as well. Just 
helps us timing. And there we go, you heard the click. Ooh, ooh, 5,000 volts. The mains voltage must be a bit high today. Yesterday it came up to 4,860, and um, well, I tried it again, it came up to 4,900 and something. Let's just have a look at the mains voltage. It's probably a little bit on the high side. To produce 5,000 volts like that, it's going to be a tad on the high side, I suspect. And the safety is our first priority. I am wearing my rubber underpants. Okay. In there. And one one knee here. Ah, there we are. 243 volts. 242 volts is the mains voltage, and it's giving me 4980 volts on the HT rail. Okay. Now, mm, I thought that uh, I would be able to get away with that transformer, but it's still too high. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to pause this here and I'll go to the whiteboard and I'll show you what I'm doing. Right, bucking and boosting. What's bucking and boosting? So you've got a transformer. There's the primary and there is the secondary. Supposing you've got 200 volts across your secondary. You've got 240 volts there on the primary. And you want to uh, you want to reduce this to 180 volts. Okay, so to reduce that to uh, 180 volts, that's removing 10%. 10%, 200 volts is 20 volts. So you would need to reduce this by 10% uh, as well. So 10% to 240 volts, 24 volts. So you get a 24 volt transformer. Uh, the secondary of a 24 volt transformer. Like that. And you connect that to one side of the primary. There's your mains coming in here. There's your 240 volts coming in. It's a 24 volt transformer. And you connect that to there. And that to there. And this has to be in the opposite phase to that. So if you're in the So this is in the opposite phase to that. So this is my bucking transformer. Because this is out of phase with that, it's reducing the voltage across there by 24 volts. It's reducing the output by 10% as well, so it's reducing that to 180 volts. Now, uh, obviously, this 24 volt winding has to be able to take the current that the 240 volt winding is taking under its maximum load. So you know, you've got a 24 volt transformer capable of passing that current through its secondary, through this primary. Um, and if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to boost uh, this to 220 volts, what you would do is you would just reverse the phase of that transformer. That would then give you an additional 24 volts onto the 240 volts, and that will give you the so by boosting it by 20. Uh, 10% by 24 volts, you're going to get 10% more on the secondary to 220 volts. So that's that's bucking and boosting. And if you were uh, if you were really keen and you like the idea of bucking and boosting, you could even have a switch, you know, that would change that phase around, depending on whether you wanted more or less volts there. It's a very messy way of doing it, I think. Apparently, this is fairly common practice in America. Um, as I say, I've never ever heard of this, 
uh, until recently. I did a couple of experiments yesterday and found that sure enough this is what happens. So um, that's, uh, that's bucking and boosting. Now <clears throat> what I did do yesterday was um, playing around with this. I bought a transformer that would give me uh, two lots of 12 volts I think it is. Two lots of 12 volts at six and a half amps each. And I thought, okay, well, I'll put them in parallel. So my 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 bucking transformer was, you know, mains comes in like that. That's at 240 volts. And on the secondary, there's two, there's two secondaries like that. And these were both 12 volts at 6.6 .6 amps like that and I thought okay <clears throat> one of these windings because bear in mind that amplifier uh, running into a dummy load at 60% efficiency provides 1500 watts out that's so 3000 watts in you know so it's quite a lot of main quite a lot of current running through the primary of the HT transformer in excess of 10 amps so um, I thought okay what I'll do is I'll parallel these so I had that like that and that like that and then that like that that going off to the transformer like that going off to my HT transformer Uh, that was what uh, that was the arrangement I did yesterday, and then I found that it didn't uh, it didn't buck enough. It didn't buck enough. So what I ended up doing was I series those like that. So that was the uh, that was the connection. That was the connection on the demonstration that I just showed you. So now I've got 24 volts worth of bucking there. But remember, if I change that phase, I would have 24 volts worth of boosting. Now the only trouble is, of course, when these were in parallel, you know, this would take 13, 13.2 uh, 13 amps. Because it's 6.6 .6 amps. Going through each winding, no problem. Now that I've got these seriesed up, this 6.6 .6 amps going through these two secondary windings, um, <coughs> Is about half of the current rating that's required so I'm gonna to have to get rid of that transformer get a bigger transformer and probably get one with a higher voltage as well because I'm, I, I want to knock that HT rail down to you know 4700 4800 is an absolute maximum so uh, I do need a little more bucking but that basically is bucking and boosting and um, if you've never heard of it, as I hadn't until very recently, I hope that uh, I hope you found that interesting, maybe uh, maybe even useful. So, uh, if you haven't got the right transformer, of course, it will be so much easier just to get a transformer wound. You know, one primary voltage, one secondary voltage. Those two windings will be spot on voltage-wise, and you wouldn't need any of this. But because you know. Transformers are becoming a bit hard to find these days. I don't really want to spend the money to have one custom wound So I've got to work with what I've got and um, To work with what I've got and get the voltage that I want to end up with here. I've got to muck around Bucking in fact you might say I've got to buck around All right, well uh, as always many thanks for watching and um, I'll uh, I'll catch you next time